Another big day in the trial that we're covering, the live trial we're covering here on Court TV, the murder of former NBA star Lorenzen Wright. Billy Ray Turner is the defendant in this trial. But this case is about more than Billy Ray Turner. It's really about um, Shara Wright, who is Lorenzen, the victim's ex-wife, because she's in the middle of everything. She's pleaded guilty, but then kind of reneged on it, saying, uh, no, 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 I, I, I take it back. I was pressured into the whole plea deal uh, for facilitation. But she's still, still um, convicted of that. Today in the courtroom, again, her, her name is coming up. It will continue to come up throughout this trial. And one question lingering is, will she testify? And if so, if so what is she going to say? So take a listen. This is a, 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 a Sergeant Dennis Evans Jr. and one of the detectives, again, talking about communication between the defendant, the murder defendant in this case, and the victim's ex-wife, Sheriff. I was asked to analyze the records and, and see how many times Billy Turner talked to Shara Wright. Uh, for that, we found 186 basically voice calls because we were basing this off of Billy Turner's records. So we had a, we, we found 186 calls between July 5th, 2010 and August 5th, 2000. All right, so 186 voice calls between Billy Turner and Shara Wright over the course of... 30 31 days, is that yes. correct? Yes, sir. Six six days. Uh, calls between Billy Turner and Jenny Martin. We found 17 calls on, on Mr. Turner's records. With the uh, same date range, is that correct? Yes, sir. The date range was the July 5th to uh, August 5th. We ran a timeline search on her iPhone uh, for looking really for instant messages between her, her and Billy Turner. We used the date range of the 18th to the 23rd. Um, what we noticed on that is she had deleted all the messages between herself and Mr. Turner between July 18, 2010 and July 23, 2010. We're going to show how we can tell it was deleted in a second. But that's where we referenced that 295 messages 83 of those were deleted, but we recovered those 83 messages that were deleted. Now, were there more messages? Probably. But our software only extracted and recovered and was able to parse out or analyze 83 of them. And we can see the body of the message reads, I'm going to need my commission, dot, dot, dot. Wren want you to bring your cards in the AM before he fly out, dot, dot, dot. You owe me, boy, exclamation point. This message was deleted. If you look at the top left, the top arrow, there's a red X. The red X indicates that it was deleted and that our software was able to recover it. Cheryl Wright is in the middle of all of this, right? She's the thing that links everyone connected to this case, right? She's the ex-wife of the victim. She's the cousin of the key witness for prosecutors in this case, uh, Jimmy Martin. And she's calling the defendant here six times a day? What's going on there? Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter, live from Memphis, Tennessee tonight. Great to see you, Chanley. Um, so let's talk about Shara here in the middle of everything. Is she texting Billy Turner, Billy Ray Turner, on the night of the shooting? She is texting Billy Ray Turner on the night of the shooting. In fact, the prosecution really focusing on a text. She sends him 25 minutes before Lorenzen Wright calls 911 and we hear him being shot on that 911 call. That is the focus of that. But really today, the prosecution spending the afternoon having the cell phone data expert on the witness stand, Vinny, really trying to tighten the connection between these alleged co-conspirators of Shira Wright, Jimmy Martin, and Billy Ray Turner, where they were and what they were saying to each other in those moments, those weeks, those months, and minutes leading up to the death of Lorenzo Wright. Let's take a listen, though, to earlier when Detective Browning talked about messages between Shira, Jimmy, and of course, Billy Ray Turner. When I'm looking at these text messages, there's a phone number that reads Edna J. Is that the contact name? Correct. And who is Edna J? Who, who is that person? It's going to be Jimmy Martin. Okay, so are there text exchanges from Jimmy Martin with Shara Wright uh, 
in these documents? There are. Are there also text exchanges from Billy Ray Turner and Cheryl Wright in these documents? Yes. Uh, in particular, do these does text exchanges include the text message that we saw yesterday sent about 25 minutes before the murder from Cheryl Wright to Billy Turner? Yes, it does. The prosecutors want this jury to believe that that message between Shira and Billy Ray Turner, that was the go time message. You owe me. Let's get this done. And this apparently had been planned out for a long time, according to this uh, messages back and forth between the alleged co-conspirators, Vinny. Also revealing today with the cell phone expert is the fact that uh, we know that Jimmy Martin, who is expected again to testify uh, tomorrow, his phone was not pinging anywhere near the crime scene when the murder happened. He's in Batesville, Mississippi, but Billy Ray Turner's phone, Vinny, was pinging in the same coverage area as Lorenzen Wright, Wright's phone when he placed that 911 call at the time of the murder. Yeah, this is this is compelling evidence. Um, but let's talk about Jimmy Martin a little bit. This is the cousin of of uh, Shara Wright. He's going to be the star witness or one of the star witnesses for prosecutors. He got a deal. He got some level of some level of immunity. He's also a convicted murderer, by the way. Um, were there messages? These coded messages between Shara Wright or alleged coded messages between Shara Wright and, and her cousin Jimmy Martin? There, there were allegedly coded messages, and again, the witness on the stand and the prosecutor say that they were talking about a party or planning a party that was code for murdering Lorenzen Wright, and the jury was able to see and read some of these messages. Let's go through some of these. Now, these are, again, between Shira Wright and her cousin, Jimmy Martin. So the highlighted thread of messages on Facebook, that would be, uh, it began about June 24th, 2010. That's Jimmy Martin. He goes by Jay Martin on Facebook. He's saying, no luck, still looking, when the party? When is the party? Shira Wright on Facebook. She went by Shira Robinson at the time. That was her married name at the time. She responds day later, days later, July 4th, saying, uh, you're driving me crazy with this party. We keep getting your days and times mixed up. What else do you need? Because I can't find another DJ this late. I want to do it before the 18th because we got the family reunion coming up. Give me a holler back. Well, this conversation, Vinny, continues into July 2010 with Jimmy Martin expressing concern about the noise and the neighbors and then five days before the shooting Shira Wright asks are we still on and Martin says he is trying to tie up those loose ends also though there is a message sent two days after the shooting on a day prosecutors say Jimmy Martin actually traveled to Memphis to clean up the crime scene Shira Wright sends it could be construed as a cover-up message about this party plot. She says, I give up. Nothing is working out. I'm sick of this party. I will plan it after the reunion. So tomorrow, when Jimmy Martin does take the witness stand, Benny, we can expect him to be huge for the prosecutor in corroborating the state's theory here that they were actually talking about murder. They weren't planning a party and really pointing the finger at Billy Ray Turner's part in that plot. Okay, let's get back to Shara. Um, right, the ex-wife of the victim, you spoke to another one of her exes today? I did. I spoke with Kelvin Cowens. He was in a relationship with Shira Wright for almost three years. The two of them met when he was interviewing her, Vinny, on the fifth anniversary of Lorenzen Wright's death. He basically told me he fell in love with her. They had an instant connection. She moved with him and her six children to Houston, where they lived, like I said, for almost three years. So he's telling me about even after they broke up and the news that the weapon was recovered in the lake, that he was in communications with her. And at that moment, he started to realize and look back on their relationship and maybe some red flags should have been raised earlier on, Vinny. Let's listen. First time in your years of knowing her that red flags went up? Absolutely. Um, you see, up until that point, it was like I thought I was looking at someone that was grieving. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so I mistaken that for, you know, what it really was because, you know, all of the crying at night, um, Cheryl would often go in our master closet 
and pray and cry herself to sleep. You know, I'm talking to her like she'll go in there like 10 o'clock at night and stand there until 2 in the morning. I have to go get her sometimes and be like, come on to bed. So it's just weird that the tables turn and it's like, okay, I thought I was looking at grief, but this is guilt. You know what I mean? I didn't know that, you know, so. But that was my first time to answer your question. That was my first time that a red flag went up. Like, we're all, you know, they found the gun. We finna find out. And she just, that wasn't her. So then he says what he misinterpreted as a grieving single mother was something he later found out was just guilt or coping with what she did and what she has pleaded guilty to. He also said he reached out to her when that murder weapon was found, thinking she would be happy, elated. Finally, they have a break in the case of her ex-husband's murder, and she reacted the exact opposite, Vinny, he said, and that was really concerning to him. He knew then something wasn't right. Yeah, she she's in the middle of all of this and i think the jury has to has to understand that for prosecutors to to win this case uh chanley painter in memphis another big day today we'll talk to you again tomorrow um let's bring in our think tank bring him back in eklund mercy nima romani kirk nermy with us uh kirk let me ask you uh, cheryl wright plays such an integral part of this case if i'm sitting in that jury box i want to hear from her i want to hear from because she's in the she's the connecting part to all of this and I guess the question for the jury is going to be is she connected to just Jimmy Martin or is she really also connected to Billy Ray Turner and 186 phone calls tells me she's connected to this defendant well that may be so but it's really hard to say this to, to me this witness you're right she's completely connected with everyone involved she's kind of the witness that could blow up in the state's face if they bring her forward because yes the jury's going to want to hear from her but she's the one who orchestrated all this she's the one who facilitated all this whether it's mr turner or mr martin what have you this is a woman who's capable of facilitating the murder of her husband knowing that she's a mother of six children so and is this coded language that the state believes the cops are saying that is in these text messages is she the source for their belief of that coded message and add to this fact the fact that she's up for parole in 2026 on the facilitation charge makes her toxic she's going to be the kind of witness that will say anything clearly she'll do anything if she'll murder her husband in order to get out of prison so it's a really uh, tough witness for the because it could blow up the state's case it could make it but it could blow it up yeah, it, extremely unpredictable. Her attorney uh, not saying much about what she would or would not say. But uh, Nima, have you, do you call anyone six times a day? <laughs> no, I do not. I agree with Kirk on this one. I mean, this is a very risky witness. And frankly, you don't need her. You know, you don't want to rely on these types of witnesses. You know, you have two convicted murderers, one for facilitation and share right. And obviously, you know, uh, Jimmy Martin, who murdered his girlfriend in another case. And that's why he's cooperating in this one. I think the state has done a very good job getting those co-conspirator statements in. I love this judge. You know, he's really getting into the evidentiary weeds. I've been watching on court TV and he's really articulating the basis for overruling all the hearsay, all the confrontation clause objection so the state is getting a lot of these statements in so why risk it don't put share right anywhere near the stand play this straight up you have plenty of evidence including corroborating forensic evidence to put these folks away Eckler mercy uh, what would happen if she came into the courtroom and took that witness stand i, I mean I, the jury will listen to every single word she says i know oh, that with bated breath i mean i want to see it it's it's going to be a cataclysmic disaster because I, you can't, you don't know what she's going to say. So it's going to be great entertainment, but just scary for the prosecutor as well as the defense. You don't know what side she's going to go on. And it's actually pretty brilliant that she put herself in that position. So I don't know what she's going to say. I'm going to tune in because it's going to be real good. Um, as Nima said, I do agree with Nima in part that legally, I don't believe that they need any more information. However, how juries are set up right now, they do want, you know, they want the flair, they want the story, they want the nuances, they want the emotional connection. They want it all because they watch it on TV. So it's 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 still going to be difficult. Yeah, Nima, did you notice that right there? She said, I agree with Nima. 
in part. I, she'll she, she'll <laughs> never completely agree with you. That is impossible. It just won't happen. It won't happen. That's why we love each other, but I'm going to buy a lottery ticket tonight because yeah. I think yeah. it's a minor miracle that we just minor saw. Minor right miracle. All right, this is what we are waiting for, though, folks.